Benitez, your head coach, Desmond Oliver. If you have a question, please raise your hand and your microphone. Coach, just how weird was it being on that, that bench and, and that locker room? Well, one, I didn't know where to go to the visitor's locker room. Like, I actually walked in here, and I walked down the hall going to Ray Mears thinking the visitor's room was there. And it was, it was, it was strange. It was definitely strange. Um, but walking in, it, it felt great to see people who appreciate what we did together for six years. And so that was that was awesome. And listen, it was great to see our to see my former guys. I mean, they were all great. You know, Santi ran up to me and told me he loved me and Josiah, you know, and the guys I recruited, Brandon and, and those guys. I mean, so that, that was that was pretty special. But then the job is after the emotion wears off and you're excited about seeing your former boss and your and, and colleagues and guys you coached, it's time to go to battle and try to win a game. Um, and, and try to have a game that should prepare you for your conference and get better somehow from the game. And so that was that was the mindset coming into it, at least. Uh, Coach, were you a little disappointed, like the effort? I mean, inside, I mean, you guys weren't able to get a lot of points in the paint and your forwards. Well, for sure. I mean, the, the score was 94 to 62. I'm not happy about that, <laughs> certainly. Um, and, and listen, you know, um, my front line got their butt kicked. I mean, Silas had zero points and one rebound in 18 minutes. I mean, that's that's not acceptable. Ty Brewer, who I think is going to be an all-conference, you know, SOCOM player, got his butt kicked at the force. By Olivier, you know, Kamwad had 23 and 8. And so, and, and more importantly, our, our guys didn't follow the scouting report very well as far as, you know, what we should do. But, listen, <clears throat> really, I, I love my team. They've been really, really good since June. Tennessee's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I mean, probably the best team I've seen here since that Grant Williams and Schofield team that won 31 games. And Kennedy Chandler is the best point guard that I've seen in this building. I don't know if you guys have seen a better point guard. I mean, Jerome Bone was pretty good. Uh, we had some good ones here. Lamonte Turner was pretty good my last year, you know, two years ago. I've not, we, we, I've not seen anything like that. I mean, he, he reminds me of a young Kyrie Irving. And I felt like his matchup, there was no one on the court that could slow him down. Shot making, pace of play, hang time in a lane, taking taking contact. Um, I feel like if those guys can stay healthy, when, if, if Oki's back, they got a team that could go advance to the Final Four. I mean, certainly a team that can, you know, can advance deep into March because I mean they can score it, they can shoot, make make threes. Um, they have an inside presence in Folky and Olivier. They're big, they're athletic, really, really, really good team. So one, I'm I'm, I'm proud to have come here and, 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 and you know, witness this test for our program because now it's on video. We'll go back on, on, on Tuesday, first day back of practice, watch the video, and I promise you we'll get better. Coach, at one time your team goes 22-3 to three run, the Vols against you. Uh, talk about that moment. What, what happened on that shutdown? Again, early in the game, I just felt like we were, we were so caught up in the emotions of being in the building, you know? I mean, you walk in, TBA is special, it's huge, big arena, top 20 team in the country. And quite frankly, my impact wasn't in our favor either because the emotions of me returning, everyone's talking about how you're gonna feel. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm on the bench sitting there watching the game, you know? And, and so my players felt that. Um, and I do think that there's a little bit of an emotional drop off from playing Friday night and playing at noon on Sunday to a team that wants to play fast. I, I'm not making any excuses, I do. And then, you know what, they're better than us. <laughs> they're, they're pretty good. And so for us to come here and win this game, we would have had to have played at an elite SOCON championship level to keep, it in single, to keep it in single digits, and we didn't do that. Yeah, Des, how different is Olivier than the guy that you saw in a couple of years here? It seems like he's expanded his game a lot from, from what he's done before. He's different. <clears throat> Um, in my opinion, Coach Barnes is at his best with veterans. When guys are, you know, good players are here for two and three years after being, because he, he's the best teacher, player developer I've ever been around. So the guys that, that end up being juniors and seniors are just going to be, you know, just elite, get, you know, improving. And so you, you add that with a point guard like Kennedy, and now he's getting dunks and drop offs in the lane, and, and, you know, and the fact that he has the freedom now to, to take open threes. It makes it really hard to guard him.
I mean, he, he's going to have a great season for him. And now he and Folky end up being a tremendous one-two punch with guard play and shooters that shoot the lights out. Coach, you mentioned um, backcourt getting beat down. How do you get Silas more involved? I mean, one rebound, no points tonight. You got to ask him that. I don't know. Um, my job is to, you know, is to motivate him and, and, and certainly coach him up. His job is to do it and go play. And so, and if he can't do it, then we got to find somebody else that can. Um, one, I know he can. I've seen him do it at a high level. Um, he just, just got to get back to doing it again. And, and so, but, but I'll say this. In this game, the one thing that, that, that Tennessee did a good job of was they take you out of your half-court sets. So I couldn't run the things that, that, that have produced buckets for Cy. Cy needs some sets to screen across, catch it, easy duck in, high lows. We couldn't get that for him. And athletically, the, the reality is, is John and Olivier, they, they, they jump a little higher than Cy. Um, but I would have wanted to see a little bit more fight in him. And, and that's my job now is, is to sit down and watch video with Cy and, and find a way to get him playing again and, and fighting and playing harder. But that's on him to do it. He has to go do it for sure. Obviously, you're well aware of Kennedy after the last couple of years, but how did he compare to what you were expecting, I guess, from him seeing him in person <clears throat> on this stage? So what my mentality is as a person, I don't know if it's the right mentality to have or not, but I, I just feel like it's me against you. And uh, I came into the game thinking we can win it. And so I wouldn't allow myself watching, watching a video to feel like any, any of their guys were, were great. My thing was, all right, they like to go right. Let's not let them go right. Force them left. If we do these things and scouting report wise and make some shots, we can beat these guys. And then when the game started <laughs> and I started watching them, you know, just dribble through people and drop dimes and make threes, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, wow, name a point guard in America who's better than him. I asked my staff that question and guys couldn't, couldn't, couldn't figure it out. And so I always tell people, if a name doesn't just come up real fast, then there isn't any. And so anytime you have a guy that's considered the best in the country at something, you're pretty elite. You're pretty elite. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you guys.